Quinn 3 Max, the biggest, the brainiest guy in the Quinn 3 family, as they put it. I love it. It's got about a trillion parameters, a little bit over a trillion parameters, and it does show that it benchmarks quite better than the original version, the Quinn 3 235B model, which when I first tested that was not very happy with its agentic capabilities. Then Quinn 3 Coder came out, and I'm very happy with that. Benchmarks are only part of the picture, so I actually set out to use this in my daily coding for a couple days. I actually did a live stream trying to test it, but what you'll find out is that the speed of it, at least for me in the United States, is atrocious. Here's eight tokens per second. Here is one that I just ran this morning at 14 tokens per second. I can't run this in an agentic loop at this speed. It's just literally impossible. You can see here that I actually did hit uh, rate limits on Open Router. I did actually briefly test this on Alibaba Direct. I got about 14 to 15 tokens per second. It's probably, it could be a regional thing. So if you're in another part of the world, maybe you're getting faster speeds. But if we look over at what Open Router is reporting here at 59.61, I was never able to get more than 20 tokens per second in any of my testing. Touching on the pricing a little bit, if you look at anything over 128K context window, it's Claude for Sonnet level. So we need to judge this model pretty harshly. Now, I will say that I do not think this model was built to be your daily coder. The speed, the cost, all of that is just too high. I do think the future is going to be more models like Quinn 3 Coder. You're seeing that already with Grok Code Fast. We're going to start getting these hyper-focused models built for coding or built for particular jobs. So I think in the future, it's probably not going to be fair to judge models like this against coding workloads, because I just don't think it's gonna be tuned for that. And if we go back over to the speed here, you can see here that I did hit quite a few API errors. This is only one that I actually captured. I actually captured about 15 of these over my period of two days messing around with this model, but it's not a very reliable, at least through open router, and it's not really reliable through the API in an agentic workflow. So jumping into just a few of the things I like to do, like what about a vibe check? I like to see like, how is it at design? Like if you give it kind of generic ideas on what you want to change, it redesigned this page to this, which I actually think looks pretty good. I think it did a great job um, overall. And it kept my tabs, like my tabs are, I think styled really nicely here. So I was actually okay with this. I think this actually did a great job, but then you look at the price. So this is one file, not even that big of a file cost me $4.28. I feel like there's probably something going on there that's causing the price to get jacked up, but it was very expensive for something that ultimately, you know, I would I would say I probably could have done you know, for 75 cents with Kimi K2 or GLM 4.5. So that leads me down my path of more thinking that this is not a daily coding model. Now, there is someone in my Discord, uh, Shriek, who actually was able to get a really nice uh, portfolio site or, or web page from a design perspective. When I try to run a lot of the prompts, I get kind of garbage. And here, I'll show you this. So this is the one that Sharik was able to get, which I actually think looks phenomenal. I think this looks really, really, really good. Where this one is mine that I actually got, and it is very busted. Uh, so yeah, it is a very interesting, model to work with. You do get a lot of variety in the types of designs. Prompting matters a lot. So me just letting it try to keep create what I, my prompt is create a killer portfolio that showcases all your skills. It's very important that you use all the bells and whistles, stuff like that. And this is what I get. And it was clear here that the way Sharik actually prompted actually did a lot better. Jumping over to Unity 3D. I actually had someone in Discord telling me it was excellent at Unity 3D. And I think it might be the case, but only in the chat interface. I could not get it to actually run well with RuCode or OpenCode doing anything in Unity 3D. In fact, I actually, it just kept making more and more errors. Like every time it would go and compile, there would be things that didn't exist or names that were wrong, or it would just, it just put itself in a loop of constant errors. So I didn't find this quite as enjoyable to work with as I did with GPT-5 when I do my same Unity test. But at the end of the day, if you're using it like in chat.quin.ai and you're asking it questions, it is a very knowledgeable model. It understands a lot more, I would say, than some of the other models. It can dig deeper into the complexities of Unity, but it is just not as good 
like running it in an agentic workflow here. So I also moved on to, to try attempted bug fixes. I actually gave Quinn 3 Max a lot more tries than I did any others. Same exact prompt. And ultimately, Quinn 3 Max failed every one of them, where I was able to do the same prompt in ChatGPT5 using medium reasoning. Uh, yeah, medium reasoning in agent mode. And it worked the very first time. So it's very unfortunate to me um, that this would actually happen. And in fact, here, you can kind of see, I'm like, okay, you've identified the issue. Now, can you fix it? So a lot of times it would be like, oh, I think I see the issue. And that that's probably a prompting thing. So I don't read too much into that. Um, because here I said, can you look at this file? There is a new chat button that has a drop down. It looks the same for new chat button. I click and nothing happens. It needs to do the same thing it's doing in the sidebar. So not the greatest prompt. I'm just gonna be totally honest but GPT-5 handled it and it was flawless. And I did this with uh, two or three other bug fixes and all of them were very similar results. It did a really poor job kind of navigating my code base, figuring out what the actual issue was and then making the changes to actually fix it. And the cost of it was just not, it's just not justifiable to be totally honest with you. And it's a little bit unfortunate. So jumping over to another use case, so deep research. Now, if you go to chat.quinn, uh, dot AI, there is an option where if you select, uh, select the model, so you want to make sure you set, select your max preview. And then if you click deep research here, it, I think it actually does a relatively good job doing research. So I asked it to do a deep dive in rotary positioning embedding, which is rope for large language models. And I'll just show you what this looks like. It ended, ended up generating this basic uh, PDF for me. I was looking at the formula and while I am not an expert at rope, I did actually do the same thing with a chat GPT and had it do a deep research on it. I'd argue that the Quinn one is better formatted. I'd also say digging into the formulas, there's slight differences between them. So I would need to kind of dig a little bit deeper. Chat GPT says these formulas need to be tweaked a little bit. Quinn says, uh, chat GPTs need to be uh, changed a little bit. I don't know who's actually right there, so I'd have to do some more digging. But I actually did get some good results and things that I did understand, and I love the format of this. So I do think using chat.quinn.ai and using their deep research is actually really useful, specifically because it's free right now. Like, I don't know what the limits are on it, but the, the fact that I can go and generate this nice-looking PDF with... I do understand enough about rope to know that they are approaching this the right way. And I do feel like this gives me something that I could go then and critique and go down and make sure that everything's working, you know, a little bit more uh, accurately. So I don't want to say these are just totally correct. Um, you know, I would love to actually do some deeper dive in that. So I do think deep research is a good use for this. I also think, architecture mode in Rue code actually worked incredibly well with Quinn 3 Max, but it took some conversation back and forth. So this was a, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This was a dollar 12. I gave it uh, a prompt, build me a plan for how I can implement a new tool and add documents to. So basically I walked it through like how we could actually upload documents, then do like a uh, tool in my agent to go pull information from those documents. We talked about doing it via semantic search or maybe simple search. And then we talked about using, um, what is it, open search or whatever the, the tool is on AWS. And ultimately we landed in what I felt like was a really good plan. So I actually enjoyed working with this model from a planning perspective. Again, it was ungodly slow for me. So I do think this model could be an alternative for planning, but you do need to weigh the cost of this because if I were to do the same thing in, in Sonnet 4, um, I probably could get to a very similar sort of plan in architecture here. If I were to run this Opus, it probably would be like three times the cost because Opus is just that expensive. So if you feel like if the problem you're doing needs like deeper knowledge, which I did find it have, like it had a really good understanding of tools that AWS had, uh, Quadrant, Qdrant, whatever it is. We talked about all of that stuff through this chat and I love the amount of knowledge that this thing actually had in it. Now, my final verdict, it's maybe a planning architect model that, that I think is, is probably true. I do not think it's a daily coder. 
it's too slow, it's too limited, it's too expensive. Even the evals were incredibly bad. Uh, so not even really worth talking about their scores, but just imagine about 30% less than what Claude Four Sonnet would be. It and honestly, it's so slow to run. I can't get enough. Ver I can't actually run them enough times without being great limited. So I can't complete it. So my my score, my I would say my unofficial score is that it's a lot lower than Claude Four Sonnet. But I haven't been able to run enough iterations because of the rate limited factor of it and how slow it is. Uh, so we'll take that as what it is. It's it's definitely not a daily coder. Uh, one of the funny things is it's not really a designer. I think GLM 4.5 and Kimi K2 just are so much better at design taste. And I had to really work to get anything, I'd say, usable out of Quinn 3 Max. And I think that's okay because not a, mod a model's not going to be for everything. It really likes the color purple. And in fact, I would say a lot of AI likes the color purple. We were talking about this on the live stream. Deep research to me seems very promising. I'm actually wanting to use this a bit more and do side-by-side -side comparisons with potentially GPT-5. And because I do deep research periodically, not as much as I used to, but I've actually found that um, when I'm trying to deeply understand things about LLMs, for example, like the, the rope, the rotary position embedding, like I'm really interested in how we manage different context windows. How do we go and retrain a model from let's say 128k context to 256k context. Like I really want to understand that stuff. And I found deep research to kind of be a neat way to do that. You just have to always like dig in a little bit deeper. You can't just take it at face value because it is AI. It does work well with tool calling, both prompt based tool calling and native tool calling, but the failure rate is higher than Quint 3 Coder in my experience. Some of those failures I think are based on the API though. So it's hard for me to kind of pin that down because sometimes the API would just return nothing. Uh, it's really bad at, in my experience, at debugging issues in my code base. You might have other things that you actually are able to do with, with it in your code base that it's great at. But anytime that I would give it a bug and have it go try to fix it, it would never fix it. And GPT-5, I'd take that same prompt and it would work. Now, it could be a prompting thing. It could be I need to actually prompt better or different for Quinn 3 Max. And I do acknowledge that. I'm just kind of sharing my experience here. So at the end of the day, would I recommend using Quinn 3 Max as a daily coder? Absolutely not. I'd consider using it as an alternative like architect or planning model. Uh, I actually really found that the knowledge it has about technology is, is pretty good. So using it in that regard, I think is awesome. Uh, one of the things that I also found was interesting is if you're using it in Jan AI, it does try to call. I wish I could zoom in on this a little bit better. Oh, it actually worked. Um, it does actually try to call functions in even Jan AI. So when I tell it to give me a full and complete code to load in a CSV, it tries to do tool calling. So you can tell that it's actually been highly tuned for uh, tool calling, which I think is a good thing. Anyway, I think that's going to about wrap it up. If you want to learn more about this or see it in action, you can check out the, the most recent live stream I did. I've got Quinn 3 Max in the title. You can see some of the pain that we ran through. We actually did a bunch of temperature testing and things in it. But I did want to give you kind of like a final kind of an assessment on Quinn 3 Max because I do think it's important for us to kind of acknowledge these models. The big generalist models, I think, are going to start fading away over time. We're going to use those fading away in terms of being a daily coder. So I think what we're going to see more and more is hyper tuned models that are built for coding. And then we can use these brainy nut models for planning and architecture. I hope this model makes them lots of money so they can continue developing their other family of models. But at the end of the day, I don't think I can use it in any substantial amount of way. I will be interested to see if they add it to Quinn code, maybe in a planning capacity because I do think there's some value there just to have that uh, encyclopedia of knowledge because it does have a lot of knowledge in it. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up. I appreciate you all. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Until next time, everyone, peace out.